So now that we've learned some of the basic notes and fingerings, let's try and play a melody. Let's play po a popular starting tune, Hot Cross Binds. Can you tell me what the fingerings for the notes are? Open first, open? Yes. Okay, let's get our starting <laughs> note. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Okay, that was pretty good. Now that we've got a basic idea of playing notes down and playing a melody, let's talk about tonguing. With tonguing on a brass instrument, the idea is that you kind of want to flick the tongue and kind of touch the top of your mouth. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And the idea is to keep the air stream going, so you're not stopping, necessarily stopping the air, but there's just this slight little break in the air when you tongue. So, can you try playing four quarter notes and tonguing them? Any four is fine. Yeah, that's a generally good idea. You're getting it. Does the sound stop or is it just like... Um. As I said, the general idea is, um, like, the air the airstream keeps going. It doesn't actually stop, but it's just a slight little break as you tongue. Um. You kind of see mm -hmm. in here? So try it. One common mistake is that with your right hand, mm -hmm. sometimes you kind of forget about it and it might close off the sound. So make sure that when you have it in the bell, it's just re kind of cupped slightly, resting there, but open so that sound can escape the bell. Okay. Otherwise, it closes it off and makes it hard to play. So thinking that and thinking ideas of tongue, try and tongue some more notes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Now that we've got tonguing down, let's talk about the idea of slurring. There are two different kinds of slurs. There's a valve slur and a tongue slur. A valve slur is basically a slur from one note to another note that, that requires you to change valves. So instead of tonguing, you, know, you just keep the sound going and you change notes by changing valves. So let's try... let's try... Um, just basic valve slurring starting on open and then playing one. <laughs> Instead of changing vowels, this is slurring between notes that you require the exact same fingering. So, thinking on like a note that's opened from like G to E, which are both notes that are have no none of the valves down, the idea to slur for that is that you slightly um, shift your embouchure um, as you slur lower down. You kind of want to loosen your embouchure a little bit, mm -hmm. and as you slur up, you want to tighten your embouchure and focus your air a little more. So, thinking that idea, thinking those two ideas, let's try slurring on two notes that require the same fingering. Try it on your own now. Yeah, you kind of get and see the idea of how um, your embouchure 
you know, its corners are still firm, albature is still set, it just slightly, just the tiniest minuscule amount of loosening as you go lower and tightening as you go higher. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, now that you've got those basic ideas down, let's try something, another easy piece that requires a little bit of slurring and tongue. Okay, here's a good one. Um, yeah. So, for the notes on the page, um, C is open, B flat is first valve, A is the first and second valve, um, and then G again is open, and then F is first valve. Okay. So, just looking through um, number 95, what are the fingerings for the Notes. 95. Mm -hmm. Open, closed, or open, first closed, mm -hmm. first two closed, mm -hmm. first closed, mm -hmm. back to open, first one closed, and the first two closed. Mm -hmm. um, actually, um, you got open right, but then it goes down to an A. So, what's the fingering for A? Oh, um, first two closed. Mm -hmm. And then the next one? First one closed. Open. Open. Mm -hmm. you know, um, sometimes it can be a little hard, you know. Even though there are only three va um, vowels, sometimes it can be hard to remember what's what. And being able to play so many different notes on a single um, valve and fingering combination, it's sometimes hard to remember what's what. Okay, so remembering that and continuing on, what are the rest of the fingerings in the second half? Open. First one closed, mm -hmm. first two closed, mm -hmm. first one closed, yep. open, mm -hmm. first one closed, mm -hmm. first two closed, mm -hmm. open, mm -hmm. first one closed, yep. first two closed, yep. open, mm -hmm. first two closed, mm -hmm. open, or first one closed. Yep. Okay, now that you've got that idea and remembering general ideas of slurring and tonguing, let's play through this one. <laughs> Starting pitch C. <laughs> okay, um, it's just a little bit higher, so think about tightening your armature just a tiny bit and um, focusing the air a little more. And make sure to take a big breath. <laughs> Why don't we try solely by playing up to it? So okay. let's start on the G with open. So we won't we won't start that high. Um, for now, why don't we go ahead and go back to hot across buns, and this time instead of tonguing it, let's play it all the way slurred. Okay. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Oh, 
such a strange instrument. It's good to definitely practice ear training to get the pitches in your head. And um, there are a lot of different types of horn. Um, the ones we're using are a double horn. This side is the F side. Most most common horn is the uh, F single F horn. Um, typically when you start off students you'll start with an F horn. It's just the side and the three valves. Um, and then a lot of today's most professional players use a double horn, which also includes a B-flat side, which is the back side of the horn, and that's what the trigger is for. And so, um, to make pl so playing some of the notes a little bit easier, there are some different fingering combinations you can play with the trigger down as well. Um, so, here we go. go back, you can see um, some of the different notes have different fingerings just depending on what you use. So, why don't... How about looking at the A here? Okay. Um, bells 1 and 2, and the trigger. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, first valve in the trigger is B flat. <laughs> consensus is that a lot of people find it easier to play the notes with the trigger and so especially getting up into the higher range it can be good to use the trigger fingerings especially because um, once you get up high enough the C up to F, up to the E are all open C D and E are all open on using just the F side and so that's all lips and embouchure right there. And so to make things easier, you can use the trigger fingerings when going up through that so you don't have to try and change notes all on one fingering that are all that close together because okay. it can be hard to find the pitch. And that is all for today's lesson. Thank you.